Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head down to Huddersfield in Yorkshire in England and we've got quite an interesting beer to have a look at from Magic Rock. So this one is the Waniac, a 6.4% IPA and it's brewed in collaboration with Wayne Wambles from Cigar City Brewing over in Tampa in Florida. This beer was rated 98 overall on Rate Beer, so it should be really nice. Magic Rock, of course, as we know, produce some really nice IPAs, and Cigar City Brewing, of course, do have a very good reputation over in America as well. The English reviewers, like Dean and Craig and Harry and Rob, of course, as well, have all raved about this beer and said that it's a really, really good one, so I'm glad I can finally review it for you on the channel. So I hope you guys enjoy this review, and it's really cool to return to both of these breweries once again. So anyway, as is usual, with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the breweries if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery websites linked to my other reviews both from Cigar City and from Magic Rock do check out the other things that are on the channel there the whiskey and sake reviews and stuff like that the whole channel has a geography based tagging system incidentally so you can go into the homepage and set for beer based on country, city or state whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of the beers from different countries and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. Always interesting to hear from you guys and your support of the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Magic Rock Brewing first off. So Magic Rock Brewing are based in Huddersfield in Yorkshire down in the north of England and they were established back in 2011 by brothers Richard and Johnny Burhouse, although Johnny later left the same year that they were founded but they were soon joined by, brew, by head brewer or brewmaster Stuart Ross. But the beer brewing began in mid 2011 and the beers proved so popular that the brewery won the accolade of best new brewery of 2012 from the website Rate Beer which you know I talk about quite a bit on the channel but the brewery was largely inspired by the kind of burgeoning craft beer scene over in America and they've been expanding their capacity and adding more staff steadily ever since because the demand for their beers has really kind of been exponential, it's grown exponentially and like I said these guys have quite the reputation when it comes to craft beer in England. But as of 2015 the brewery are based in the Willow Business Park in Berkby and they now employ over 30 people and the new site has a brewing capacity of 10,000 hectolitres per year and a fermentation capacity of around 70,000 litres. So these guys like I say a very well thought of craft brewery from England the English reviewers that you'll see on YouTube Rob, Harry, Craig, Dean everyone these guys really say a lot of good things about this brew so if you get the chance I would recommend that you try some of the Magic Rock beers and they are quite prolific as well so there's always new things coming out from them as well but anyway on to Cigar City Brewing so Cigar City Brewing as I told you are based in Tampa in Florida and they were founded back in 2007 by Joey Redner who previously worked for Dunedin Brewing I'm not sure if that was in New Zealand or if that's another brewery that's local in America but he'd also worked as a beer writer for the Tampa Bay Times as well and he hired Wayne Wambles as his brewmaster back in 2008 and the brewery produced their first beers the following year in January 2009 but these guys are well known for their limited Hanafu Imperial Stout and they host a beer festival every March to celebrate the release of this one this is one of these beers in America the white whales that folk queue for hours for to get a hold of but as of March 2016 Cigar City are in a partnership with Oscar Blues Brewery from Longmont and Colorado, another very well known craft brewery from America, one of the real kind of pioneering ones from Colorado actually. But the reason for this partnership was that Joey wanted to expand the capacity of the brewery but he didn't want to borrow money to do this. So they actually have their own facility in Tampa which has an output of 60 BBLs per year and, and they also contract brew as well at facilities such as Brew Hub but with the new partnership this will likely change actually and I've noticed in the months since they've done this that it's getting quite a bit easier to come across some of the Cigar City beers and they're appearing in cans of course as well. The Cigar City beers were always available in bottles but that's probably the Oscar Blues influence coming out. Oscar Blues of course were I think were the first brewery over in America to actually can their beers so really quite cool or maybe the first one in Colorado I can't quite remember but Oscar Blues are of course known for canning their beers they were one of the pioneers of that a lot more environmentally friendly of course but I should say as well there is a little bit of a there's some kind of controversy in this about the sort of peer networks of craft brews that are popping up there's some of the kind of die hard people I guess would, would say that it's not such a good thing but as far as I'm concerned you know if they can produce the beer with the same quality and the partnership that, this, that, the, that they're forming stops the kind of big beer companies coming in and destroying the craft breweries then it is a good thing so yeah it's quite an interesting point for debate but we're here most importantly to taste the beer so if you want to read more about Cigar City you can check out the links in the description below as I say you can check out the brewery website and have a look at all the different beers that Cigar City do but anyway that's enough about the two breweries just now let's actually get on to the tasting of the beer itself so this guy is a 6.4% IPA 
I do have the stats of the beer here. It's Dry Hop with Galaxy and Australian Hop, of course, Eureka, which is one that you don't come across all that often, but that's a big, piney resinous hop. They've got Simcoe as well. Those are all Dry Hop additions, but they also have Citra and Mosaic Lupulin powders in this beer as well, and they've got a malt base of Golden Promise, Wheat and Crystal Malts as well, so it should be really nice. Like I said, rated 98 overall on rate beer, so it should be pretty awesome. I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. Let me find my cursor and bring up the camera. There you are. Just let you have a little closer look at this one, you can see this really nice new style of artwork that's coming out from Magic Rock. You saw me review the Grapefruit High Wire, of course, which is their older style of artwork. I'm not sure if they'll keep that, but you can see Magic Rock are quite distinctive for these uh, these nice styles of artwork in this one. But there you can see it says Magic Rock on the side here, and then Cigar City as well, but very nicely presented. There's the title, Waniac of this beer as well, and it tells you the stats of the beer just on the side here. Number ba number 16, small batch brew. So, yeah, should be really nice. It says best before the 17th of the 5th, 2017. So it's well in date, and without further ado, let's get this guy open and get on with the tasting then. Oh, you can smell, I'll tell you something, you can smell the sort of fruity, resinous, hoppy characters coming off this one already. Look at that. It's excited to get out of the can. So that'll do for the moment. We'll just set this back down. So as you can see, this beer has poured a really nice kind of bright, if I just bring it under the light here, you can see it's a really quite bright, but at the same time, quite a dark orangey amber color. There's a little bit of sediment visible on this one. So it will be sort of can conditioned or bottle conditioned, I guess you'd say. There's a solid finger of a frothy, slightly beigey colored head on this one. It's almost a creamy colored head that you're getting on this beer. There is a degree of transparency to the beer, but at the same time, it is kind of opaque in color, but overall it looks really nice. There's some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there and quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there. But overall, it does look very nice. You can smell the nice juicy fruits off this beer as well. So let's have a little closer look at the aroma on this one then. Oh yeah. For me, it's that the Simcoe is actually coming out quite nicely on this. It's the passion fruit that I'm getting. Yeah. That's lovely. So you can you can notice a bit of the pine resin on this one just underpinning it. Like I said, that's the Eureka. The Eureka was a hop I had to look into before I did this review because it's not one that I've come across all that often. But it's supposed to have a nice grapefruity character and a lot of pine resin in it. But you can smell that just kind of underpinning the beer. But there's a lot of the Simcoe coming out on the top of this as well. That nice passion fruit note. There's a lot of tropical fruit in this one. You can smell a bit of the grapefruit coming out of this one the sort of darker note that you'll get from the grapefruit but really it's the it's the passion fruit the Simcoe notes that are coming out on this one and you can smell the galaxies in there as well galaxy of course is probably the most popular Australian hop at the moment and that's giving you a little bit of a sort of peachy note you can smell just that little almost I always find peaches smell just a little bit kind of almost dusty they've got this kind of dusty sharpness to them and you can smell that in this beer or maybe that's, of course, maybe peaches don't smell like that. It's probably the Galaxy Hop that does smell like that, but it's really, really nice. You can smell that peachy note that you'll expect to the Galaxy. And there's mangoes and sort of papaya in there as well. That's the Citra Hop coming out, these juicy tropical fruits. And there's a bit of a nice kind of, there's a bit of orangey citrus in there. You, It comes out, the juicy tropical fruits, the orangey notes in this one are a little bit darker. They're a little bit more oily. Almost, I guess you could maybe say it's more of a, a kind of tangerine thing. It's got a bit of a darker citrusy character, this one, than the uh, than the sort of, than the you would get from the Amarillo hop normally. The mosaic gives you that slightly sharper tangerine citrus. But it's, there's a lot of fruity, juicy character in this one. You know, that's exactly what you'd expect from this beer with all those hops in it. The lupulin powders, of course, it's the least vegetal way. It's, it's basically a way of getting the oils out a bit better in your brewing, something I do need to read up on a little bit more, but it smells absolutely lovely. You can smell that it's just that little bit more juicy and the fruits are coming out just that little bit more. But underneath, you can get a little bit of sweetness from the malts. There's a sort of biscuity, kind of bready thing coming on in this one. A little bit of a white bready character in there too. Yeah. But the main point of this beer, of course, the main note in the aroma is the fruits. Like I said, it's leaning towards the Simcoe character a little bit. 
but there's a good dose of other things in there as well. So just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this beer before you get stuck into it. But let's give this beer a try now. So this is the Waniac, a 6.4% IPA with Matt from Magic Rock Brewing down in Huddersfield in Yorkshire in England, brewed in collaboration with Cigar City Brewing from Tampa over in Florida. Slangia. Oh yeah, that's a pretty damn good beer, that one. That's nice. It's actually very, very smooth as well. That's the other thing I'm noticing about this one, the hoppy bitterness on this isn't that big for me. Maybe I'm just getting a bit kind of dumb, dumbed down with that, actually. My palate's maybe just getting a little bit saturated when it comes to hoppy bitterness, and I don't feel it as much anymore. But for me, this one's really nice, actually. It's just nice and juicy. But of course, that could be down to the, the use of the lupulin powders. But as your mouth adjusts to this beer, you can really feel that big piney resin coming out in the beer. That, Like I said, that's the Eureka and the dark kind of grapefruit character at the front of the palate there too. It's also really nice. You can just pick that in here. That's a really good beer, you know. Straight off, I can see why this one is really quite highly rated. The malt base in this one, you know, is fairly simple. The the middle of your palate is just kind of blanketed with this sort of white bready character. There's a little bit of sweetness in there, maybe a tiny little bit of a biscuity sort of caramelly thing, but mainly it's just a sort of straight up kind of white bready sort of thing across the middle of your palate. The complexity of this beer really is in the hops. Yeah. So like I was saying, you know, it's the pine raisins and things that are just underpinning this beer. There's a little bit of a kind of earthy character to it as well. As you progress into the aftertaste, you get this little bit of earthiness coming out of the beer. So in the back corners of the palate, there's a wee bit of the earthiness right there. That's the mosaic hop. I always notice mosaic gives you this big kind of floral aromatic pine raisin -y sort of thing. But you also get a little bit of earthiness and kind of herbal character from it as well. So I'm getting this in the back corner of the palate. And as you come further forward, that's where you get the pine raisin. So there's a good bit of floral aromaticity in there. Like I said, though, there's a wee tiny bit of a sort of herbal vegetal thing just as you come forward. But mainly, it's the pine raisins just underpinning the beer. Maybe it's even a little bit spicy in that regard, actually. But of course, the fruitiness is really interesting in this beer too. So like I said, if you just go behind that front curve of the palate there, there's a nice kind of dark grapefruit and that's just underpinning the beer. I think there's a bit of tangerine in there as well. You can get that dark kind of orangey citrus character in there just as the beer starts to mellow out a little bit. I'm really getting some of that too. But then you start to get, as you move later and later into the taste, that's when you start to get the juicier elements coming out of these hops. So there's a little bit of passion fruit in there, like I was saying, that's the Simcoe coming out. You can get these lighter kind of mango and papaya notes in there as well, which is coming from the Citra, of course. Yeah, there's a little bit, definitely those kind of, I'm getting quite a bit of the papaya actually, that's coming out in this one. Around the front curve of the tongue instant of the beer is just really quite lightly floral. It's maybe even grassy, you would say, but it's a really nice beer. Yeah, this is good. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this one again. I have to say, I do like, as I said in the last video for the hypnotist, I really do like these kind of tall boy 500 milliliter cans that Magic Rock are doing now. But this is damn good. It's interesting because as the beer starts to mellow out, like I say, you get a wee bit more of the kind of mangoey things going on in this one. But this beer does lean towards the more oily fruits, like I say, the grapefruit and the sort of tangerine thing, passion fruit in there. But as it progresses, you get a little bit of a sort of mango and papaya thing coming out. I think there's maybe a little bit of a kind of almost a bit of a lychee flavour comes out later on as well. You can just feel these lighter tropical fruits. You will get a little bit of that from the mosaic as well, incidentally. But the citra and the mosaic are the ones that always give you these kind of lighter tropical fruit flavours. But you mean, I mean, overall, like I said, I can see why this beer 
is so highly rated and as it warms up you can actually feel the maltiness just coming out a little bit more there's a wee tiny bit of a sort of caramelly biscuity character in this one it does start to build itself a little bit as the beer just warms up but overall it is really really nice i certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again i'm not sure if this is a limited edition or if this is going to be a regular beer from magic rock but certainly pick it up while you have the chance it is really good and it certainly won't disappoint fully deserving of that 98 rating that it has on rate beer i can see why the other guy the guys down in england that are reviewing beers were saying you know you need to try this one but in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, I'd say mid-bodied. Carbonation is, you know, it's kind of moderate. It's in the middle. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. They've got it fairly right with that. But it's a little bit oily. I would say it does lean to more, more towards the oily side of the IPA. Malt base, like I was saying, is quite smooth, but it does start to sweeten out a little bit more as the flavour of the beer progresses. As you'd expect, there's a big hoppy bitterness to this one. As you move into the aftertaste, it's those pine resin flavours from the Eureka and some of the, the grapefruit and the, the kind of orangey tangerines in this that are starting to stick out but it's really quite nice this beer there's a good bit of juicy fruity character as well and you will notice that a wee bit more probably from the lupulin powders especially as you go into the aftertaste the beer starts to get a little bit juicy but there's a good bit of hoppy bitterness on the sides of the palate around the front curve of the tongue it is just that little bit lighter but you know as I say overall this is a pretty damn good beer you know when you've got magic rock and Cigar City involved in this one, you certainly wouldn't expect anything less from either of these two breweries. So a really, really solid beer, this one. As I said, if you get the chance to try it, I highly recommend that you do. So, yeah, the Wariac IPA from Magic Rock Brewing down in Huddersfield in Yorkshire and Cigar City Brewing from Tampa over in Florida in America. A really, really good beer, rated at 98 on rate beer, and, you know, I can see exactly why it is. A, this one definitely is for those of you that love a big, piney IPA this one it's got a lot of fruity character in it as well so if you like fruity IPAs or you like piney IPAs this one will definitely hit the spot for you so yeah and um, so as always thank you for watching my beer review until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff do check out my social media but most importantly do let me know that your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below if you have tried it for yourself let me know what other magic rock beers I should be reviewing as well you've seen the the grapefruit high wire you've seen the hypnotist now and now you've seen the waniac do let me know some of the other ones you'd like to see me review be great to hear from you guys but i hope you've enjoyed this one and as i say check out the english reviewers if you want to keep to keep more up to date with what's going on with craft beer in england because i'm over in sweden most of the time and when i'm home it's scottish beer that i tend to be reviewing but i have been lucky to try some of these nice english beers recently so i hope you've enjoyed this review and until the next time slander just now the waniac from magic rock and cigar city brewing until the next time slander just now and i'll catch you guys very soon make sure you try this beer cheers